and welcome to this week's Scrap Savvy Workshop with Venetia Ramsey from Scrapworks. We are going to work with the Fabulous Florals Essentials Pack to create a single page layout. From this pack, I'm going to work with this pattern paper. It is the back of a page called Pretty in Pink. Okay, from the cut apart sheet, remember we've already cut up most of it. I need three of these little pink labels. I'm going to need this strip of pattern paper over here. And then I'm going to need this tag over here. So if I just, I've already inked everything. So remember this last, if you're following along from last week's class, we cut off the bottom part of this tag to use in our layout. Um, so this week we're just going to make use of the leftover piece. So that's what you'll need for today's class. I'm just going to keep this one on hand. You will also need a plain cardstock, a 30.5 by 30.5 piece of plain cardstock that we can work on onto right and then uh, you're going to need from this from our paper laser cuts this uh, one that called here's your moment but you're going to need the coordinating gray board to go with it as well and then from the lovers in the details gray board we need this sheet and from here you're just going to need the three little butterflies you're going to punch out some hearts. I'm going to show you what to do them. These ones are punched out in white and then we've just colored them. Okay. So there's the little labels. I've got a little bit of um, bling to add to my page. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the pattern paper to cut out some more tabs and a, a banner. And then the three little sentiments. Okay. So that's kind of what you need for today's class. We're going to start with this piece of paper first. So what I'm going to need you to do, because this is your the biggest job on that you're going to have on hand, is that you will need to fussy cut this out for me. You need to cut it out on the outside, and I want you to cut it out on the inside. So I have already pre-cut, because I don't think you want to sit through me fussy cutting. And to make it easier, what I did is I just cut a little slit. I cut this piece apart. And then, uh, so I uh, cut out around the, the edge first, and then I cut this piece apart. You need to keep these pieces, don't throw them away, and try to keep them as, uh, you know, as neat as possible. Then once I had cut this little piece, I cut, this is what I used to cut through to cut out here. And then it was becoming difficult to handle, so I cut another little section out over here. You can see if I take, because... Uh, we're going to need the little inside piece as well, so don't throw that away either. So then to make it easier to handle, I just cut it off over there as well. If you need to slit it somewhere else, it's not a problem. By the time, the way we lay it out when we use it, you won't even notice that we've made little slits to make it easier to manage. Okay, so you need to cut out the whole little uh, bouquet of flowers or wreath of flowers. Okay. You need to keep that, you need to keep the inside bit that you cut out, and you need to keep the outside bit. We're going to work on those bits first, and then we'll do the rest of the stuff, so we can just put that aside. And I don't need that. Right, so once you've cut everything out, you're going to be left with pieces like this. What I've done is I've taken some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide, okay, and I've inked around the edges of the pattern paper because what I'd like to do is when this lays on when we put the puzzle back together I'd like it to have created a shadow so I'm going to show you how to do that I've already done two so this is the top right you're going to need to work very um, gently so add uh, your ink very carefully to the pieces that you've cut out remember we've got some flimsy bits so my suggestion is to hold the little piece in place and work in small little areas and just work slowly and take your time to add ink. So in this case, we're going to add a, the first layer of ink. So if, you, if it doesn't go on exactly the way you where it needs to, not a problem. Just keep um, working gently. So you can see this one is also a little bit flimsy. I'm going to just go in and hold that. If you are concerned that it may break off, my suggestion is to get a little bit of double-sided tape and just to take, tear off a little piece of tape and reinforce where that little 
where the bend is. Let me just pop that in over there. Okay, and then that'll keep it together long enough for you to work with it. I'm just going to cut out that little piece of tape that's showing. Like that. Okay, so that'll give it a bit more reinforcement and we can go in then and just ink. So a little bit of uh, flimsy and finicky work today, but it's going to be worth it in the end. Okay, so now that I've got that first layer on, you can go in and add another layer. And that'll just darken the edges just a little bit more. I'm trying to get some ink further into the pattern because I want to create a shadow. So once you're happy with that, you're then going to go around the edges. Same thing, I'm just going to add that first layer of ink. And then go back and add the second layer to make it just a little bit darker. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to do that to the other one as well. So once you've done the four corners, you've got your ink on all four corners, we're going to do the center piece. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing. You'll, um, the pieces that are a bit finicky, you just need to hold on to them. When you ink, and again, I'd like to get quite a bit of ink coming in to create that shadow. While you're busy with your inking, what I did with mine, I'll show you here. I also inked around the edges of my flowers, inside and outside, using uh, the Distress Oxide Victorian Velvet. I used that just to go around the edges, just to get rid of the very white white. And then on the leaves, I went around and added a little bit of peeled paint. Also the Oxide, Distress Oxide peeled paint. Just here and there, I just added a little bit, just to um, get on... Get a little bit of ink and a little bit of different color to add a little bit of um, dimension to the the wreath okay so i did i also added ink like that okay so once you've done this we're going to put everything together but before we do that i want to just add some splatters okay so i'm just going to put these goodies like this so that we can get some splatters on them and splatters on there so before we do the splatters, what you'll need to do is punch out a couple of hearts. I think I have six hearts, but we'll do these three extra because you never know if you're going to need a few extra. And then you're going to squish your Victorian velvet onto your mat. You will uh, add a little bit of water to that. Mix that up. And then you're just going to put your, let the hearts, you know, soak the hearts in the ink. And then we can just put them aside to dry. I left mine to dry by themselves. You can speed up the process by using a heat tool if you like. There we go. And um, then I want to use the leftover. There's not really much left over. We can add to that. We can make another little uh, puddle of ink. We'll just put some over here. And maybe over here, we might need quite a bit. Okay, and then you're going to wet that as well. And wet your paintbrush. You need that reasonably wet. So we're going to pick up some of this ink and we're just going to splatter it on the background. So we just want to bring a little bit of ink in here and there. I know that my photo is going to go over here, so I'm not too worried about getting too much ink over there, but I'd like to just get a little bit of the pink to splatter on to my background. Not a lot, so it's just a few little splatters. Like that. 
and then I will do the same thing on the corners just to get a little bit of ink out on there like that and we'll put that aside to dry I'll do the next one and you'll see I'm using a very thin brush because I just want little splatters there we go And the next one, this one's going to go in this way. And we can always go in and add some more if need be, once the page comes together. And I'm just putting them off to the side to dry. And while that's drying, we're going to do the rest of the technique work. There we go. Very happy with the way that's turned out. Okay, so we can just put that aside to dry as well. And rinse the brush off. Because I'm going to need it again. Let's get a cloth. Okay, and then clean up your area. I'm going to leave these off to the side here to dry. We might just add a little bit of heat just to speed them up a bit, speed up the drying process. There we go. So next up I would like to do my butterflies. So these are two extra. I've, I'm only going to use three but I want to show you what I did. Okay because I'm wanting to use a light color we're just going to prep the surface with some white and I'm going to be using aged mahogany and sponge sugar distress paint so and then you're going to need um, some brushes I'm just going to use the this brush to add a bit of you can add gesso or white acrylic paint it's entirely up to you but you would want to because I'm working I'd like the, um, the pink is very light I don't want it to have a gray tone to it it's better for me to put down uh, some white paint just to prep the surface with some white I, I, um, If I'm doing a lot of butterflies at, at a time, I would leave them in the little cutter pot uh, frame and I'd use a brayer to apply the paint Okay, so we can just clean that off Right, there we go. So that just needs to dry quickly. I'm gonna help it. There we go, that'll be dry already. Okay, so we're gonna use a little bit of. Um, I've already shook up my paints, but you can hear there's a ball, so it needs to be sh you need to shake your paint. I just need a little bit of sponge sugar. You're gonna put that first layer of. And paint on. So I'm going to cover the entire butterflies with the sponge sugar. I'm going to get that first layer of the pink paint on. Okay. And then again, we're just going to help that dry. I'm just going to speed up the process with a heat gun. Added a second layer because the sponge sugar is so so very light and I like it probably is no rhyme or reason for it but if I put one layer on this way then I like to put the other layer put another layer on painting in a different direction okay so we're gonna leave that that's also gonna dry quickly while that's drying we're going to mix up some paint so I'm going to need a tiny little bit of sponge sugar 
just want to do the edges with a darker color and I couldn't find a color that I liked um, you know I, I just couldn't get something dark enough so I decided to mix my own so all you need to do is take a little bit of aged mahogany and add it to some spun sugar and we can get the shade of pink that darker pink that we need to do the edges so I'm going to get one of the butterflies that I've already done so that you can see where I'm going with this okay so I just wanted to add a little bit of the darker color to the edges all right I want to make sure that my butterflies have dried they don't have to be 100% dry the paint doesn't have to be perfectly dry but you don't want it too wet Right, so that'll do. Okay, so then I'm going to take some of the paint off my brush because it's I want to work with a, a reasonably dry brush. And we're just going to pull some paint across the edges. Like we're inking just the edges of the butterfly. like that so that it gets we can darken it quite quite a bit and then I took my finger and then just work that paint in a little bit So you'll add and work it in, add and work it in. And if you end up covering the entire butterfly, it's not the end of the world. I'm going to show you now how we fix that. Okay, let's do the other one. Same thing, you're just going to apply a little bit of paint all the way around just to get those edges a little bit darker and then we're going to work it in with your finger So we can put this one aside. I'm not going to dry it, uh, put it in water yet in case I need a little bit more. I'm going to need it. Okay, so I'm just going to take off as much of the paint as I can without, um, I don't want to wet the brush, but I also don't want too much of this uh, dark color left on it. I'm just going to pop a little bit more of the sponge sugar onto my mat. Just, you just need a very little bit. You're going to pick that up and in the center, here where I've made it a little bit too dark, I'm just going to tap on some of the sponge sugar from the body out to the edge of the wing, like that. Just tap tapping it on like that. And then I'm going to take this very thin brush same one we made the splatters with and give define the bodies I'm just going to paint the bodies so that they are a little bit darker and that they will stand out a little bit more like that perfect right then you need to just pop your brushes into some water so that they can um, Get all the paint off you don't want the paint to dry on that and there we go so you will need three butterflies done like that so now i have a few extra but they won't go to waste because i will use them on something else okay then we just need to clean up the area that we were working on now normally i would leave the paint to dry it makes it much easier to take off you see here where it's dry it just comes off so easily and then just clean the surface. OK, 
Okay, so the next part of, of getting everything together is to do the title. So I'm going to show you, I already uh, started putting mine together. Okay, I'm going, you're going to need this little frame. There you go. Right, so what I've done is that I have attached the title to the grey board. Just to give me that little bit of height that's needed. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, on the paper, you need to take off all the little uh, joining uh, strips. Need to, if you don't get them all off now, it's not a problem. We can do them. They can also be cut off once we've attached. Okay, I did the same with these ones. I just cut off all the bottom, cut off all the bottom ones. We're not going to take the word letters apart just yet. We'll do that once everything's attached. Okay, like that. We'll do the same on the special, and I've kept the dot somewhere because the dot does come loose. But there's the dot. Again, we just need to take off those little bits, the joining bits, like that. And on this one as well. Okay, so now we're just going to add a little bit of glue to the grey board. I'm trying to make sure that I get the glue kind of more to the edge of the grey board. I'm not too worried if I don't get too much in the center. But you want your, your paper to attach well. So you just want to get the the glue on reasonably well and you also don't want to make it too wet otherwise then the paper tears I am tap trying to tap the glue on so that it doesn't um, just run everywhere You, and I think you would like it would make sense to use a glue that dries clear so that if some does ooze out somewhere you you won't see it once it's on the page. Well and I think a little bit of ink can't fix. All right, and then we're just going to attach the moments, the, the paper moments to the gray board moments like that. While the glue is still wet, you have an opportunity to line everything up. Perfectly. If you're unsure, you can always check from the other side as well that there's no paper bits hanging over anywhere. Because that'll also give you a good indication of if you've gone skew or not. That looks pretty good. Okay. I like to take a brayer and then just hold and just go very gently to get rid of any air bubbles that may have been created from the glue like that okay so we're going to do the little frame like that as well i have inked this frame with um victorian velvet so and i'm just going to put i don't mind to put the paper the glue on the paper with this one it's easy enough i can handle it a lot easier than the um, the words 
yeah that's the only reason I put the glue on the gray board is because these are a bit flimsy so then you get glue everywhere but either way is right you don't have to there's no right or wrong way you do what's easiest for you okay so that's done and I've already inked that with uh, Victorian velvet now we're going to attach the special and remember I had the I think I've wiped the dot onto the floor I'll look for it just now Right, here's the dot for the, that goes above the special, the little eye. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there. Okay. And then attach the word, the um, paper word, to the grey board. And I think I've put on a little bit too much glue, but that's of course okay. It's going to ooze out a bit. I'll just clean it up. Okay, you want to just make sure that you get it aligned nicely. That there's none of the grey board sticking out. Turn it over. You can then see if the paper is shifted. There we go. And I'm just going to attach the little dot, turn it upside down and attach that. I am going to take it apart, but for now, there we go, the eye must have a dot. And find my tweezer, maybe think this will work. Just something to move it into place and hold it there. There we go, that little piece I can just trim off, and I'm happy with that. I'm going to put it up there with the hearts so that it can stay safe, and hopefully I don't lose it. Turn this over, just had a chance now to, to take. So where the glue is oozed through, I'll just clean that up. That looks a bit better. And then use the brayer just to get rid of any air bubbles that may have been created. There we go. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I will go in and just get rid of all the little bits of glue that's oozed. Okay, so the next step with this then is to ink these with the green. You can choose any color. I, I'd like to uh, carry on. I'd like to have a little bit of a uh, contrasting color. So if I don't want it all too pink, so I'm going to add the green. So I'm using Peeled Paint Distress Oxide. To ink the letters and they are going to come apart I am going to stick them down individually that's not a problem okay so there we go that is done I found though that when I had put on the peeled paint that it did look a little bit um, I don't know a little bit too luminous too bright and what I did is I took a little bit of white paint, just the tiniest amount, a dry brush, and went around the edges, just pulled some of the paint 
across just to soften the green a little bit so that my page keeps that softness because I wanted something soft I didn't want um, the everything to be too bright so again if I put on too much paint I'm just going in and using my finger to take some of it off and remember it's going to because the distress oxide is water reactive the uh, paint is going to react on the, the letters and the paint's going to go that like soft pastely greeny color you can just play around until you get a color or the tone that you like the effect it just softens still has that uh, peeled paint coming through but it just softens the color a little bit so that it's not so bright and doesn't um, contrast as much. There you go, you can give it a little guess. Right, and I've already done the, the, that, the word that says that tell our story. Those I've already done and I've already cut them apart. So what I'm going to do now quickly is clean up and then we'll come back and show you what I have planned for the page. Oh, I forgot my dot. I'll do that off screen. I'll see you in a bit. Mm -hmm. 